Some people say, well, who should get screened for cats in the gutter? Like, me? Well, we would argue virtually me for everybody because we have lots of red flags, things that are associated with increased risk of heart attack and stroke, certainly not necessarily causal of a heart attack or stroke, but if you have this condition, we know you're much more likely to have one. Well, if that's the case, I would think you'd want to be screened. Of course, one of the easiest is family history. <laughs> if you have a family history of heart attacks and strokes, hopefully you want to be screened. But there's a huge additional list ranging everything from Frank sign, which is ear creases, which I have. <laughs> my partner takes care of my arteries. I haven't ever had an event, don't plan to, because she keeps them well. But I certainly have increased risk. Psoriasis, migraine headaches. If you've had breast cancer, you've been treated for that. Obstructive sleep apnea, miscarriages, gestational diabetes, polycystic ovary disease, low thyroid. Uric acids elevated, gout, heart rate consistently above 75. If you study this list, you're going to find very few people that don't have a red flag. And I would think they'd want to be screened. It doesn't mean that they have disease, right? They very well may have healthy arteries, but why wouldn't you want to go find out? And the list keeps growing for these red flags. These are ones we just added this year. Asthma. You know anybody with asthma? They have a higher risk of heart attack and stroke over time. Divorce. You know anybody who's divorced? <laughs> <laughs> the gout. Gallstones. You know anybody who's had gallstones? Working too long. Post-traumatic stress disorder. Hodgkin's disease. Even if you were treated successfully. We now know those individuals have a very high risk for heart attacks later in life. So we would argue it's hard to find somebody who really shouldn't want to be screened to at least see, hey, do I have a cat in the gutter? Does it look like one's headed my way? It doesn't cost much. It's easy to do. And we've got those tests. It only takes a few blood tests and a few urine tests, and they're not expensive. But I can tell you they're not being utilized. Both Amy and I see a lot of patients that come to us, guess what, after they've had a heart attack or stroke. So they've seen the specialist, right? They survive. It's great. And we get their records, right? We want to find out about fire. In virtually every case, there's not, none of these tests are in there. <laughs> because... So many providers are still cholesterol-centric. It's inflammation. These are the most important tests a person can know. Is your artery on fire or not? This is dangerous disease. It's usually not very calcified. The tennis court's on fire. It could cause an event any second. This is calcified cooled off, and it has to cool off some. So calcium is not necessarily bad. It can be a sign of healing, scarring. So how are we going to put that fire out? It's pretty simple. You have to find the root cause, apply the proper remedy. That's the way of the wise. And it's not that tough. So we had our cartoonist create an image for us, which is, I think is fantastic. The trunk of the tree is the fire. It's inflammation. And it grows arterial disease and causes heart attacks and strokes. What can fire up the trunk of the tree? Look at all the root causes. There are numerous root causes. And they interconnect with each other. They're not isolated. Like periodontal disease which is here. Well, it's associated, guess what, with insulin resistance and diabetes. It's also associated with genetics, also associated with lifestyle, etc. But periodontal disease certainly is one of many roots that can fire up the artery. Endodontic disease can fire up the artery. 
obstructive sleep apnea can fire up the artery, low vitamin D, prediabetes, certain gut and the bacteria, the gut microbiota can lead to disease and drive insulin resistance. Nicotine, everybody knows, of course, nicotine's bad. Doesn't matter whether you smoke it or chew it or vapor it. It's bad. It can inflame the arteries. Cholesterol is here. Certainly cholesterol is one of many, 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 many things that can fire up the artery. So we don't ignore cholesterol. But if that's the only thing you go attack, <laughs> and most patients have some of this other stuff going on, yeah, you fix them, they had a heart attack, you clobber their cholesterol, and a bunch of them will be back needing another stent because you didn't address the other reasons they had the fire and it smolders on. Psychosocial issues, that's huge. That's anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder. We have the science now with the inflammatory markers showing us those conditions create inflammation. They fire up the artery. It's bad. Something called myeloperoxidase, an inherited lipid problem, lipoprotein A which was unequivocally proven to cause heart attacks in 2009 with several huge studies, over 100,000 people in each study published in the journal Lancet. The data was so strong, Dr. Michael Lauer, the head of the National Institute of Health after they were published, came out in the U.S. to the healthcare providers and said, look, you know, lipoprotein A causes heart attacks. Would you please measure it and do something about it? He might as well have been talking to the wall. We see patient after patient who's had a heart attack and it wasn't even measured. And statins don't treat it. <laughs> you can treat it with a vitamin. Maybe that's a problem. The treatment's too cheap. I don't know. <laughs> but it really is not hard for us to guarantee our work. Can you see how simple it is? It really is simple. We utilize genetics. We're huge into lifestyle. We evaluate each individual patient for every one of these potential causes of fire. Whichever ones aren't optimally managed, we optimally manage it. What do you think happens to the fire? It goes out. Our bodies are miraculous. You put the fire out, the disease will heal. It will stabilize. It's that simple. It is that simple. Every healthcare provider can do this. And when you find an issue that isn't optimal, that's causing fire, we frequently need to go beyond the standard of care to take care of it. A lot of the public doesn't realize what the standard of care is. They have a misconception. Well, I'm being treated to the standard of care. That's as good as it gets. No. The standard of care is a legal term. It's designed to keep us out of the courtroom, and they darn well better never make the standard of care optimal, because as hard as we try in some patients, it's tough to get that aid. You know, well, you shouldn't be sued over that. So the standard of care needs to stay a C, but we need to strive for getting A's with our patient and each one of those issues that can drive fire in the artery. 